Hey guys, what's up? My name is Ronan Vico. In this video, we're going to learn how to export data from Power Apps to a CSV file the easiest way. Let's learn it quickly here. First thing we're going to do is to build a collection. So I have this table called TB address, a SharePoint list on my SharePoint. And I'm going to collect here a clear collect here in a collection called call my uh, CSV data. And I'm going to filter, for example, every row here that is from the seat south field. Okay, so I'm, I, I want to have all rows from TB address as x, where x dot equals south field. Also, I want to select some columns here. I don't want to generate a CSV file with all that columns that I'm seeing here. So for example, I'm going to get the ID, the city, and the country region, just to have some columns in my CSV file. For that, I'm going to use show columns and get the ID, city, and uh, I said country, like right? So country region. Now I have this preview. When, when I select the text here of show columns, I can see the preview. and Take a look here. My column field name is not the name that I want on my CSV file. So you should rename your columns like you want in your CSV file, okay? So I'm going to rename it. Rename columns. Rename columns. And I'm going to rename field five to city and field seven to country. Now, oops, it's not with string anymore, I forgot that. So now we just write like that. So field five is going to be city, field seven going to be country. When I select the rename columns, you can preview here and our data is ready to be a CSV file. How to do it? The easiest way when you have your data ready, you're going to send this data to a Power Automate Cloud Flow in a JSON format. So first thing here is to create a flow. So I'm going to insert here the Power Automate, create new flow. In this flow, it's going to be an easy flow to create because it's going to work with any data. You don't need to, to have a param with the columns. No, we're going to send the data and the data will become a CSV file. So create from blank. You can use the same flow here in any application, right? You can send it, you can use the same flow in any application that you have. So the first input here is going to be a text and this text is going to be the JSON data. So the JSON data we're going to send from the Power Apps. And after we have the JSON data here, data from Power App, Power Apps to create a CSV file, Next step is to give a name to this flow that is easy to use on Power Apps. So how to do it? I write like that. I started with, with a flow name, so I will know that is a flow, and I will give a name that is easy to understand on my application. So flow generate or create, create on CSV file and return the file to download. Okay, create a CSV, CSV file from a JSON collection and return the file to download. And you should use the underscore to separate the words because if you create a flow and use on Power Apps without the underscore, all the words are going to be concatenated. Okay, so use an underscore here. The, for, the next step here is to use a uh, compose. And in that compose, we're going to compose the JSON data. And we're going to save here in this studio, in this Make Power Automate Studio. And we're going to continue this flow on the Power Automate, okay? We, we, we don't want to keep developing here. We're going to open here the makepowerautomate.com, go to my flows, find a flow that, that you created my flow is here of course should be on the same environment right so i'm going to click edit here 
And before we continue again, I'm going to do the following stuff. I'm going to, after I have my JSON data, I will call the flow. So I'm going to set a variable, my CSV file, for example, var my CSV file and call my, my Power Automate Cloud Flow. Flow, create. Do you understand why I use the underscore? Because it's easier to use here on Power Apps. If I don't have it, it's going to be concatenated. So flow create a CSV file from JSON collection and return the file to low dot run. Here I'm going to insert the text, the JSON data, the JSON data. So I'm going to insert JSON. And in this JSON, I'm going to insert the data. The data is going to be my collection that we created together here. So JSON call my, call my CSV data and this flow going to return for me the csv file so how to do it we're going to insert a power apps again here and respond to a power app or flow and the output is going to be a text csv file we don't have the csv file yet we are building this flow okay it's just to have a uh, uh, output for the the power app so csv file one two three save okay now that we have this flow right here we can test sending this data send this data to my flow to see what's going to happen okay let me close here this set so i'm going to run this flow and save the data on this variable so let's do it let's try to see what's going to happen here i click the button and when I go here on my Power Automate Studio, I can see my run history and the data on my compose. Here we can see what we have. We have a JSON data, but this is a string, not a JSON. So I compose here so you can see that when we use a JSON that comes from Power Apps, that a string. So we need to convert, transform, this JSON string to a JSON data on Power Automate. How to do it, Ron? We're going to, instead of using this input, we're going to use a dynamic content and a function, right? So the function that we're going to use is JSON. JSON transform string to JSON format. In Power Apps, the JSON transform a table to a JSON text. Here is the, is the opposite. We transform the JSON text to a JSON format. So I'm going to transform to JSON this JSON data. Now we are transforming the Power Apps text doctrine. We are converting JSON text from Power Apps to a JSON, JSON format. Save. When I run it, it again on my Power Apps. Let's refresh here to make sure that it is working. Refresh. Okay, let's click this button again and see in my run history what is going on. Now, if I open here my inputs, take a look. It's a JSON. We have exactly what we need. We have a JSON. Now, it's easy to generate a CSV file and download it. Let's go. Before that, you are understanding that we can use this same flow in any app because we are not mapping the JSON. If, we, if I try to, to change here my columns, it is going to work. It's dynamic. So let's go, let's finish this Power Automate flow. The next step here, now that we have a JSON, is to create CSV. So uh, let's write CSV, okay. Here we have data operation create CSV table. We're going to insert from this output right here, the JSON map that, that we saw before. And this output, it's going to be a CSV, okay? It's going to be a CSV. So for example, it's going to be a city and country. We're going to have the CSV. So the next step is more easy. We just need to create uh, 
CSV file and download it. So how to do it, Ronan? We can use the OneDrive. Ronan, why you are using the OneDrive? Because like I said before, we are trying to do some, some flow that is going to be a dynamic flow that we can use it again and again and again in any application. So if you use a SharePoint, you're going to, to think about permission in the using OneDrive, the user can save the file in his own OneDrive and I can use this flow in any app. Make sense? Comment down below if it makes sense for you, okay? Uh, so I'm going to use here the OneDrive for business and I'm going to use the create file, of course. So create, oh my God, I am blind. I'm not seeing the create file. Oh, okay, it's the first one, sorry. <laughs> so create file and folder path is going to be, for example, the root. And I can insert a name here for the, the folder. The folder is created automatically. So I can, for example, CSV files slash, uh, and there is going to be our folder. The file name, we should use the date and time of the CSV so we, we don't have any duplicates. Or we can create an input here for the JSON CSV. I prefer to just use a, um, UTC now and, and get the data. So it's, it, it's, it's easier to don't have any other parameter here, right? So let's, let's insert the file name automatically here. Uh, UTC now, format date time, UTC now, and I'm going to format like year, 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 month, month, day, day, and uh, our, our minute, minute, second seconds okay of course we're going to use the dot csv here now that i have a file name that won't repeat i will insert here the file content obviously is going to be the table the csv from the table that we created right so file content is going to be dynamically the create csv table output now that we have the file we need just to get the link to this file so we can send to the Power Apps and the user can download it. Next step is to use OneDrive again. And here we're going to use the share link. Where is the share link? Create share link. The file ID is going to be the ID created here on the create file. Link type. Link type can be added because the, the user is going to be uh, the one who downloaded it. So, and the, the file is going to be created on the user who is running the flow. So no, no, no worries here, no problem. Link scope can be anonymous again, no worries, but you can use organization because uh, it's more secure. So I'm going to use organization, edit and the ID file. And after that, we're going to have the link. Okay, so I will respond the file to my power application. I'm going to respond the link. But before and this, we need to insert a parameter on the URL to force a download on the, on the link. If a user opens this URL, he going to open that file at the browser, we don't want it. So let's check it out so you can understand what I'm saying here. I'm going to save here. So we understand that after we run it, we are going to have the CS file, CSV file link. Here at the Power Apps, in far my CSV file, after I run it, I'm going to have the link here. So if I refresh here the flow and click at this button, Let's rename this button, create CSV and download. So if I click this button right here and see, if I select here my var CSV file, we're going to have this link, right? We're going to have this link right here, var CSV file, CSV file. But this link right here, if I try to open it, so let's use a launch or a download here. Take a look, take a look in that. After I have the link, I'm going to download my var csv file dot csv file. If I click here, take a look what's going to happen. 
he will try to download the link, but the link opens in my browser and I don't want to open the CSV in my browser. I want to download it. So what we need to do here is in this flow or in the app, if you want it, we already have the link right here. So we can insert in the link, the final parameter. We can insert interrogation mark and insert the download equals one. That will force the download of the file instead of opening in an Excel. So if I click here, you can see instead of opening a browser, we're going to have the file downloaded right here. But I recommend you to have that on the flow. So you can insert like right here because you can use the same flow in all of your apps. It's going to work because let me show you what I tried to say before. Okay, I'm going to save it here so I will have the flow ready. I'm going to change here. I don't need any more this parameter here. I already have at the flow. And what I am trying to, to say to you is that if I need to change my JSON, I can change here. For example, oh, I want a new column. Okay, let's let's insert a new column here called post or code. So I inserted a new um a new column in my JSON data. No worries. If I click here, it's dynamically. My my CSV data is we is going to download here. If I open this CSV, we have the new field right here. Did you understand? I can change my collection and export to CSV and I will not have any issues, okay? I hope you like this video. One final tip is that you can use the show columns to reorder the columns in your CSV, okay? So you can use the show columns to select what columns you want in the first and the second and, and so on. To end this video, we created this menu right here, the slide menu. If you want to know how to create it, it's on the past video that I published. So check it out and learn for free how to do this cool slide menu. And if you watch this video to the end, comment down below your feedback and the secret word comment strawberries. Comment strawberry, then you know that you watch it to the end. It's a way of knowing who like it, the video. And se você fala português, tem um canal em português, link na descrição. Thank you so much for watching. We see you in another class, in another video, and please subscribe.